Welcome to part two of Digital Badges Exposed. This section is about badge technology and the basics of how to build your own badge program. At its most simple, this is how you issue a digital badge. A student completes an assessment if they meet the minimum threshold set by the assessment creator. A digital badge is issued. If they don't, they can go back and try it again. So an assessment is just supposed to be an assessment of learning, should be aligned to learning outcomes. So this might be a quiz, it could be a minimum number of discussion forum posts, it could be a project a student had to do. So an example of this happening automatically like it does for my Spark tutorials is that a student can complete a quiz, they meet the minimum score for the Spark tutorials, again that's 100% uh, completion, then the LMS can just issue the digital badge. If the score isn't met, student can try it again or not. If you want to manually issue badges, which might happen if you have students completing work that needs to be graded, this is how it works. Student turns in the project, instructor grades project, student meets the score or not, and the instructor can issue the digital badge, whether by learning management system or credly or something else. So again, for the Spark tutorials, everything's set up to run automatically, which is completely scalable. But in the long run, as we grow this program, we would have to have more projects like this where we're actually grading things. But that takes a lot more time and a lot more effort. So when it comes time to choosing a platform from issuing badges, there are a few options out there. I highly recommend using your campus learning management system if it issues badges because this is free and this is where your learners already are. Your students know how to use your LMS, your faculty mostly know how to use the LMS. It's a little bit tougher as an instructor to use it as, than as a student. Um, it tends to be a bit of a black box for librarians because you don't really get into your learning management system very often, or maybe there's only one librarian that's responsible for the learning management system presence. So get in there, check it out. It's actually pretty powerful and it can be a really useful platform for you. There is a fancy option called Purdue Passport. This wasn't beta for a long time, but now it does cost money. Purdue Passport is a homegrown solution from Purdue. Uh, it costs anywhere from $800 a year to $20,000 a year for up to 30,000 users. So it is very expensive, but it is relatively seamless because it allows you to use your institutional login. So that's nice. And it's all self-contained in there as well. So if you had a, if you had a small campus, it might, it might work for you. Lastly, you could also try using uh, the WordPress open source software, that's wordpress.org, with a couple plugins, the Badge OS plugin and Learn Dash. So it costs you a few hundred dollars to buy both of these. Learn Dash is necessary because that basically sets, sets up your site as a learning management system, and you need a learning management system to house any learning activities and to track student progress. The Badge OS plugin issues digital badges, and there's a free version and a paid version. The free version doesn't do very much. You would need the paid version to work with Learn Dash to actually have a fully functional site. So it does cost a few hundred dollars for both of these. The WordPress software is free, but you have to have server space. It's relatively cheapish because it's a one-time fee, and it is possible you already use WordPress for your campus website or for your library website, so it could just be kind of expandable that way. So that's an option for you as well. Ideally, just choose something that uses the Open Badges standard. This is pretty common that most digital badges platforms do use Open Badges standard. And what this means is that any badge issued on this standard is exportable to any place else that uses the same standard. So if you issue badges in Open Badges standard, your students should be able to put them onto LinkedIn or someplace else that takes Open Badges standard. So it makes your badges portable, and that's a pretty big deal. It gets them out of your own learning ecosystem into the broader world. So if you had a fully fleshed out information literacy program, students could show off their information literacy badges on LinkedIn to prove to uh, employers that they have done a lot for information literacy. So if you want to get started thinking about this on your own campus, start by identifying your campus's learning management system. Uh, you probably already know what it is, but a lot of places brand their LMS. For instance, here at Cal State Fullerton, we brand it as Titanium. 
Um, so if you're not sure, log into it. It should say somewhere in there what your LMS is. The most common ones are Moodle, Sakai, Brightspace D2L, Blackboard, and Canvas. Now if you use Moodle, Brightspace, or Blackboard, you are in luck because these systems have native capability to issue badges. However, that functionality has to be enabled by your LMS administrator. So that's something to think about. Moodle does issue badges, but the badges uh, module has to be added on, for example. For the other two, it might just be a feature that needs to be turned on or off. So if you're not sure or you can't find the badges functionality, talk to your LMS administrators. And all of these work on the open badges standard too, um, from what I've read. I only have hands-on experience with Moodle, but I understand the other two work with open badges. Canvas uh, doesn't have native functionality that I know of. It's probably a feature in development because it seems to be pretty popular these days, but there are some add-ons to help you turn your LMS into a badge issuer. So this is the end of part two of Digital Badges Exposed. To continue on, please watch part three on learning object design to learn more about how to design effective tutorials.